All right, YouTube, uh, this is a point update. So I am, uh, this, this was just a, like I said, a small point update. I gave a gas there just to get it going. It seemed, it might've eventually went, but for some reason it felt like we were parked and wasn't willing to move right away. Uh, there was a work vehicle behind me that's actually stopped and doing, uh, some technical work so I don't know if maybe I thought it was a car that was coming but uh, nonetheless I'm not expecting anything significant or different I know this had some changes to smart summon um, not sure if there were any real improvements it doesn't really say clearly in the release notes if there's anything uh, significant that would have been uh, put in play as it relates to uh, yeah, city driving, uh, definitely not highway stack at this point. So it's uh, got to try and remember here which which version we're we're on. I want to say uh, yeah, twelve point five point four point two, and so I've been on twelve point five point four point one this whole time. Uh, since the last videos that we've done. So um, we're doing a lunch drive here. Um, I have a typical Friday appointment that I do and that includes uh, picking up some lunch. So uh, typically it'll actually take me on the highway and then from there uh, we'll go to uh, some city streets, but in this case we're, we're just doing all city. The map decided that it wanted to do all city for whatever reason that intersection obviously no real improvement or change with this uh, same same general issue it it sees the grate I probably should mark it but it definitely sees the grate as like a stop line and then so I end up stopping at the stop line then I end up stopping again at the stop sign uh, and it's a very abrupt stop too when it happens uh, it's like a last minute decision that it makes that oh I need to stop here so um, would be nice if they clean that up and I should mark that up uh, a little bit more frequently than I do so overall that turn was fine uh, it kind of crept forward as I would expect it to and hung out and then and then went um, we are a wonderfully cool 54 degrees today and nice and sunny so um, sometimes that can wreak havoc with shadows or uh, tweaking with the camera and things of that nature so um, given this map and the direction that we're going today um, did a nice job of slowing down for the car that, that decided to cut across so this is sometimes where it'll pick this lane and then it'll jump over to the other lane because there's a car in it uh, in this particular case it's not being as uh, uh, assertive so we're staying in the right lane so things to look for um, making this left-hand turn from this right lane it'll cut the lane and sometimes it's really not that big of a deal just because I think almost everybody kind of leans to the left as much as possible when they're making this turn uh, especially since there's traffic that's coming towards you sometimes to make a right as well um, so but it leans a little too much for my preference especially uh, especially when I end up in a situation where I've got a car to the left of me and it's now starting to cut into that lane and that car is actually following the lines versus uh, cutting the corner type of thing. So um, ideally I just like it to follow the lane marking because then you don't have to worry about it uh, being aggressive or not aggressive. Um, so that would just be my, my take. Uh, we'll see what it does here. So we're cutting the line, but not horribly. Like that's the kind of thing I can live with, you know? So if it did that consistently, I'd be completely fine with that. Um, up here, we've had issues, not this stoplight, but the next light, we've had the phantom braking issue where it'll just randomly decide that it's gonna treat that green light like a red light. So I keep my foot over the gap or accelerator uh, just on the off chance it wants to react. I don't know if it will just because there's cars in front so that tends to impact how it reacts so yeah we just went through it smoothly no no issues 
Um, we'll have a brief moment here where there's really nothing to report home about. About two intersections from here, uh, sometimes, and actually I may, I'm going to go ahead and direct the car to get into the left lane. And the reason I'm doing that is I actually want to see if it's adjusts how the car reacts. Two intersections, three intersections from now, excuse me. Um, the lane will widen, and then you'll end up having a left-hand turn lane on the, on obviously the left side. Uh, the car will tend to drift to the left-hand turn lane rather than stay straight. And so we we'll just want to see whether we see any improvement there. Excuse me, it's going to be four intersections, apparently. I forgot forgot about this one we're just about to go through. So, And I feel like the car in front, a lot of times, will dictate how much the Tesla will either drift over to that lane or stay straight. Nice job there, just continue to go and not reacting to the yellow. Um, we're getting it here. And so here's our drift. And, uh, all right, so it stayed straight. That's good. It's typically it'll like actually drift all the way into the to that uh, left-hand turn lane. So um, part of me wonders if it's seeing kind of the because uh, it's it's concrete here, and so you end up with the kind of the lines that define the the various concrete pads. Sometimes I feel like it could create an issue where the car thinks that's the lane line and not. Uh, not the white markings on the, the road. So um, next up will be the twists. So we'll have kind of an S turn. Um, I do an S turn on this road, Mid Rivers, and then there's another one that I like to test out on Jungerman. And what I'm looking for is how well the car actually holds its lane. Um, there's a tendency for drift. I actually would like to be in this right lane to test it because I think it drifts more in the right lane because the wide lane gets wide and then narrows back down. Uh, but I'm going to let the car kind of, you know, so let me see. Now, it's Normally I would want to already be in this right lane so I could test the drift, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. So, but, so staying centered fairly well there actually. There's the improvement and then now we're getting over. I don't know if that's a permanent thing or just because it's a good weather day, but a uh, much better job hanging out and keeping the middle of the lane rather than than drifting uh, on this drive. So no issues generally here. Uh, we'll make the right hand turn and I think I've, I've uh, beat this with a dead horse but it's always interesting to see like what other improvements might come about um, I don't even know if that's the right phrase by the way feel free to correct me in the comments and call me a moron uh, so when we go down down here the second hill right at the top of that second hill is a firehouse sometimes it, it also kind of does like a little s bend sometimes the steering wheel can be a bit jerky and either make a hard left or a hard right and just kind of a shift Almost like it's trying to avoid something in the road, but there's nothing in the road for it to avoid. Um, I've yet to be able to kind of figure out what it might be key in it, keying in on. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll see whether we get that. Uh, and then a, a, a few hills down the road, uh, there's another area where it does the same thing sometimes. Um, let's talk about speed for a moment. Uh, I know people have been talking about having inconsistency issues with the speed where it goes too slow too fast, etc. This is a 35 mile an hour zone. We're hitting 38. Um, by the way, this is the section where I end up with that weird reaction we were just talking about, and it handled that fine. So, um, good day today. No, no oddball steering reactions. Um, we've been hanging out this whole time right around the speed limit, maybe a few miles over from time to time. Uh, I wouldn't really say under in any case. All right, let's see how we react. So, car stopped. Nice. Good job. Running clearance. Yeah. Well done. I didn't expect that to really be an issue, but you never know sometimes. 
especially when it's a new software release, uh, you'll just notice some weird behaviors that you didn't exist before. And that's that's the one thing that I, I feel like you need to do with full self-driving is you need to pay attention to what the limitations are because that allows you to build confidence on one hand with the system and what it's capable of doing, but at the same time, understanding those limitations uh, goes a long way in terms of keeping you engaged at the right time. That guy was going all hardcore. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but if you rewind the video, he was uh, wearing a ruck and had uh, dumbbells connected to like rings so that he was farmer carrying them. I have no idea how far he's walking like that, but uh, that's, that's pretty intense. So, and I'm a gym guy. All right. So, oop, oop. technically speaking, I think that yellow Chevy should have gone, but the yellow Chevy kind of didn't take its place. And so full self-driving decided it was time to go. And I don't necessarily disagree with that as well, because there was a car that did have the right-of-way that was making a turn and so it, it just kind of looked and, and went so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock it I think there's times where you end up kind of yielding your right-of-way if you uh, you know if you're you're hesitating to actually do what you need to do so beautiful day if you don't mind 60 degree weather, you know, 59 degree weather. Uh, my gosh, outdoors is absolutely gorgeous with the sun out the way it is. So, so, so far actually doing, doing good today. Um, I made, trying to think about testing this on the drive back, like what direction I want to go. Um, I may not at this point uh, I may just choose to do something else later on uh, altogether. Sometimes I'll do the same route. Sometimes I'll shift. Uh, there's your phantom braking. So, all right, I'm giving an accelerator. So there's an intervention for you. So phantom braking at a green light is still a thing. Um, we didn't get rid of that. So I kind of almost don't expect that to get fixed until we have like a, a more significant release because this is just a point release and what I mean by that is you know you get 12.5.4.1 right like this is this is the lowest of the low updates uh, in that regard I think when you get something more significant like going from 12.5 to 12.6 or 12.7 I think that's the type of release we're looking for before phantom braking uh, would even be pulled in as a consideration in terms of the type of update but you never know sometimes it could just be like a very minimalistic change that's causing that behavior and and it could be captured in just a small point update but uh i'm i'm expecting and waiting for something uh bigger and i'm not sure what that that release date will be but uh looking forward to whenever it happens um so we're following the lane and we're not cutting. Yeah, we did a good job. So sometimes I think there's there's kind of a weird angle, right? You're going up a hill and the hill tilts a little bit as well. So all in all, um, yeah. It says one or more side cameras occluded. So we'll have to see what triggered that. Uh, so we've been fine this whole time, but but getting that message now so interesting that that didn't happen until we turned and got this far so doing good on the uh braking i mean I, overall now i guess i i should say i think overall fsd has really done a good job um no major complaints on on my end it's just little things like right here sorry that car is like right up on me and they are technically they were technically in their lane but see here's the drift where the car is riding the line and that gets pretty uncomfortable for me and pretty uncomfortable for them if the car is basically getting a little too close for comfort and that was the tesla that was drifting left so 
call that your second big intervention in terms of uh, just its inability to, to recognize uh, recognize the lane and stay within the lane and not not be pushing or putting a pressure on somebody else to to move left in their lane. So, but as I was saying, overall, I really do appreciate it. That being said, two interventions and we haven't gone six miles. So, what's the expectation? What's a good standard? Um, I think for a robo taxi, it's got to be better than two interventions in a six mile window. Um, would that have caused an accident? No, I think the Tesla would have kept its distance, but uh, still not appropriate. So, all right. Thank you. <laughs>